What up, though? This your boy, D.O.C. I got an exclusive interview with Yuck Mouth. I'm talking about we talk about everything from the beef he had with Master P, how, from his perspective, the beef started between Suge Knight and Puff Daddy in the club way before the Source Awards. He also talked about being on tour with Biggie Smalls and chopping it up with him three days before he got killed out in California and much more. So check this out. Make sure you like this video, share it, and subscribe. Peace. The boy DOC, and I got Yuck Mouth on the line. What's going on? Uh, what's up with it, boy? Man, shit, chilling, chilling. How, how everything be going with you out there? Man, finishing up this goddamn uh, the Bill Story Deluxe album. So in the lab working, doing stretches and shit. You know, getting ready for he was dropped next month. What, what date is supposed to drop? Um, I usually turn the album in, then they give me a date. You know, so it depends on how I turn it in. But probably like the end of next month, most likely. Oh, okay, okay. Well, like from the very yeah. beginning. From the very beginning, I had when I reached out, I was like, "Man, I've been a fan since Operation Stackola when, when you had to buy the CD and it came with the book in it, with the you know, like the damn near like the little booklet that told you the definition of the words and stuff." Y'all was saying, you know, in there, right, right. Like during that time, what made what inspired that, and what made y'all made you get into the rap game to start doing that? What take on that hustle? Um, well, basically in the streets, uh, me and them met in junior high school and shit. You know what I mean? So uh, we we was fucking with it like since the eighth grade as a group. We had a group called Brothers with Potential. Um, met a few other dudes from from um, from, from um, big groups that went to our high school. Rap around went to our high school. Rest in peace. Uh, both of the uh, the, the Who Riders, Hassani and uh, Mr. Taylor, went to our school too. So we had a lot of rappers at our school, and then um, just me dabbling in and out the street stuff. I was in and out juvenile all a lot. And um, numb, I end up moving to Vegas or something, and um, so like, we stopped rapping. And um, during that year, I got locked up. I did a year in camp, and I just locked in, man. Like camp became like this battle rap university. Like everybody was, you know, battle rapping inside of the camp, you know. And then you had like uh, juvenile hall celebrities like Ascari X, you know. What I mean, I had Water the State, you know, and. and Sebo, you know what I mean, and, and people like that. So we, just, I mean, me just being in jail, I got more focused than anything on rap because it was so many, you know, rap uh, juvenile hall artists that was just on. You know what I mean? So it was a lot of dudes. Every time, much time, we rapping, we freestyling, and um, it just made me get back more focused. You know what I mean? So sitting up a year, you got a lot of time to think. So uh, I came up with our name, the Looney Tunes. Um, it was a Looney Tunes before the Loonies. I came up, you know, I'm a cartoonist, so I drew the kind of man, the logo. And, um, I came up with my name and Numb Skull name. You know, Numb wasn't Numb. He was the skinny one back in the day. So when I got out, um, you know, I was just looking for the dopest rapper that I knew in Oakland, which was Numb. You know what I mean? So uh, when he got back from Vegas, you know, I told him about the idea, about the group. And he was all in. You know what I mean? So uh, we just started rapping like, you know. Got the group together, gave him the name, um, told him the songs I had, the ice cream, man, rigged up a couple of them other songs, whatever. And, um, yeah, we just, we just jailed and started laughing, you know what I mean? And, um, long story short, uh, we ended up getting a record deal with, uh, CNH. You know, at this time, he got Drew down, and Drew down was recording all his songs at Dangerous Studios. Matter of fact, and Banks is doing all the music. So he like, yo, come to the studio tomorrow, man, you know what I mean? And, um, I'm into do shot of short, whatever. So we go to the studio the next day. I'm not knowing it's a rap battle. <laughs> so we get up there, man, and uh show like, yeah, man, yo youngsters rap against my youngsters. This youngsters was rap and rhyme and uh, Aunt Dilly Dog, bad influence. You know what I mean? I knew rap and rhyme from, you know, junior high, me and uh. Yeah. So I'm like, man, he was murdering this nigga in, in the eighth grade. He can't fuck with a nigga now. <laughs> so I was ready. You know what I mean, none of them had no raps right there ready. So I ended up having to battle Rapper Ron and Dilly Dog and Eclipse, who was my cousin. I didn't know he was my cousin at the time. So it was three against one. So I ended up losing, but I gassed them niggas. But Rapper Ron was a dude that could just freestyle and just grab shit from the Basically, if you back in, what, what was this, like 92, 93, so if you're talking about what a nigga got on, his jury, you know, everything that's in the fucking studio, people looking at that like amazing back then. 
You know what I mean? So Ron had the gift to just freestyle for hours and hours and hours. So it wasn't no writing bars that could outwrap a nigga that could just freestyle for a thousand hours. So I lost that battle. And um, at the same time, you know, got my stripes. You know what I mean? Um, it was in front of Too Short, uh, Spice One, Richie Rich, and Banks. You know what I mean? This is my intro into the game. You know what I mean? Numb the rap because he ain't had no raps with right. So Drew didn't have to rap. Drew already signed. You know what I mean? So this is my entrance into the game. I had to go straight and gladiate You know what I mean? They, they threw me in with the pits. You know what I mean? So, you know, it was a lesson learned. And after that, man, I just was really focused. I ain't letting nobody outrap me ever again, period. So I was just on my shit after that. So that, that's what really made me start really rapping, just being around it. And also, um, my roommate, you know, after we got signed, my roommate ended up being A-plus from Souls of Mystery. So the, the, the blend of being around them with their hip hop, you know what I mean, with their bars and how they do their thing, combination with me being from the streets, you know what I mean, and, uh, and you know, going to jail and, and, and freestyling and shit, going always to Berkeley and freestyling and battle rapping. The combination of that is, is what made Yuck Mouth, you know what I mean? That's why my, my rhymes is complex, you know, it ain't the, you know, the average, you know, simple shit because I've been around nothing but gas, you know. And A plus, um, at his apartment, we used to have rap battles. You know what I mean? You lose, man. You know what I mean? You, 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 you know, it, it was ugly for you, period. So we have a rap battles. You know, niggas getting beat up in the apartment, all types of shit. Niggas knocking down bitches. So that was gladiator school, too. Yeah. You know, because you got the soul you missed. You got opio. You got all the motherfuckers. You got casual. You got all the motherfuckers coming through playing their music. So I'm soaking up game, period. So between living with A plus and fucking doing Drew Down album at Dangerous Studios. That was my school uh, of rap to where I learned, you know what I mean, to really get get on this shit, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, now, in between that time, because I, 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 I can't remember the name of the album that Drew Down was on, because I think I got on y'all first, and then from that hearing Drew Down, because, you know, out here in Detroit, we kind of catching things out there on the Bay. For some reason, I don't, it's, right. it's a crazy connection between Detroit and the Bay. You know what I mean? So I start hearing about the Drew Downs and stuff. What in between in between that time was like were you already on uh Rap a Lot Radar or how did that come about between y'all? Yeah, I was already on Rap a Lot Radar back then. You know what I mean? Well basically your artist named Seagram, rest in peace, my big homie. He was the first one signed to Rap a Lot way back then, like I think eighty nine, ninety or some shit he got a deal with Rap a Lot. So he put out a couple albums, you know what I mean? Shit with Scarface, you know, Bushwick Bill, everything, Gangsta Nip, you know, just classic shit, you know what I mean? Just Oakland, you know, he was the first Oakland artist to sign to a Down South label. So when I made Ice Cream Man, when I got out of camp, you know, it was like a neighborhood hit, you know, just for me, you know, beating on my chest and just saying it on my chest and just rapping in the neighborhood. Everybody knew it word for word, you know? So when C could come to the Ville, we like, what's that song y'all sing? They like, that's J.J., that's JJ, uh, yeah, well, got the ice cream man, nigga, woo-woo-woo. This is a page where you have to know a nigga house number. So the nigga called my grandma house. I don't know how he got my grandma number, but he offered to buy ice cream man for a thousand dollars. This by just hearing motherfuckers sing the song in the neighborhood. He never heard me say the motherfucker. This nigga singing, he like, I want to buy that motherfucker. And, uh, me, just being on my shit and knowing how important that song was for me, you know, I said, nah, man, I'm cool. You know what I mean? Not even having a deal at this time. I wasn't even with CNH nobody at this time. I'm just fresh out of jail. But I uh, denied the thousand dollars. Like, nah, this song gonna lead to something. I knew it. And that ended up being the song that got us signed. You know, that was the first song I said to uh, CNH that made them even sign us. So if I wouldn't have kept that song, you know, we probably wouldn't be rapping right now, basically. So, um, them being on, on, on rap a lot, they already know about me, like, since 92, period. So then, uh, fast forward time, um, we on New Tribe Records, and they got uh, a deal with rap a lot, too. You know what I mean? So we all on New Tribe version. We, uh, label mates. And, um, we recording on shit, recording in, in and out the same studios, Enterprise Studio. We using the same producers. Tone Capone is also working on Scarface shit, so... You know, we just going from room to room, you know, chilling. If Tone Component was going to Scarface room, I'd go in Scarface room with Tone Component right then. Then they'd come to my room, you know what I mean? So vice versa. So about the second album, this is the second album. Um, 
Numb was doing a lot of partying, you know what I mean? And um, I was in the studio by myself most of the time. And I just, you know, laced the shit and leave the verse open for Numb. And uh, Jay Prince would come in a couple of times. And he was like, yo, you doing this shit by yourself. You need a solo dip. And I wasn't thinking about going solo. I was about a group thing, you know what I mean? And then I started thinking like, yeah, hey, you right. And he was like, yo. and then at that time, we was calling the album Smoke a Lot and Drink, and not, drink a Lot, not uh, Lunatic Music. And then I was like, yeah, you smoke a lot, so shit, you supposed to be a rap a lot anyway. You know what I mean? And on top of uh, of that, um, my, damn near half my neighborhood worked at rap a lot. A lot of niggas from Oakland, from the bill, was employed because Seagram uh, had a deal over there. So a lot of my homies became A&Rs over there, uh, managements, uh, all types of shit. You know what I mean? So a lot of my, my whole neighborhood was working at rap a lot. So everybody put in a good word for me. Me and Jay clicked when he met me, and um, shit, we we start trying to do the paperwork, and um, my executive producer, <laughs> CNH man, got heated, man. That nigga wasn't feeling it. Uh, <laughs> the nigga gave us the runaround for about two or three years. That's why the album even became a double album, because I started working on the album, and um, this I was waiting on CNH to sign off. It took two years, so two years worth of material became a double album. So that's why I thugged out even became a double album. I wasn't trying to do a double album like Pac or Biggie, like, yo, I got to do it. That wasn't even the plan. It just, we was waiting for so fucking long. And dude was giving us the fucking runaround. I kept recording. So all the songs kept came out dope. So we put all that shit out, you know what I mean, at the same time, which ended up being uh, the platinum selling uh, thugged out the Avalation. Yeah. So, so, so I know you just explained how important the song Ice Cream Man was, you, was to you. Was it like a publishing issue when Master P came out with the Ice Cream Man? Or what caused like the friction? Was it like the business part of it or just because someone oh. else was using the same thing? No, nah, no, nah, it was just that dude didn't acknowledge us. You know what I mean? He wasn't giving the props to us. Like, you know, I got this from, you know, in his interviews. He was like, yo, man, I'm the Ice Cream Man. I call, I'm the, like, he wasn't really giving us our props. You know what I mean? It wasn't that he did the song. Anybody could do a rendition of you know what I mean? We mix it or, uh, you know what I mean? Do what you want to do. It's just give props. You know what I mean? Just show us some love. So, you know, these little youngsters had a song, you know, back in the day. I really liked it. You know what I mean? So I redid it my own way and, and put the spill on it. He never said that until like recently. You know what I mean? Like on his interviews, he like, yeah, 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 yeah. I got the song from them, but mine sold more. He'll say some little shit, <laughs> slick shit like that. But he recently started getting the props, but back then he didn't. So niggas was on his helmet, period. Right. You know, and then me. Knowing that I created that shit on the motherfucking juvenile home bunk, nigga. And <laughs> yeah. know exactly where I got it from, you know what I mean? Because in Oakland, we call crack ice cream. Not in Richmond, not in Vallejo, no disrespect, not in Frisco, Oakland. We called our crack cream. So NWA had a fucking song called The Dope Man. So instead of the dope man, I made the ice cream man. That's how the song came up, period. We called cream, we called dope cream in Oakland. And instead of the dope man, I called the ice cream man. That's where the shit come from. Yeah. He can't tell you how I was made up. I'm the first one to make that song. It wasn't like niggas was calling a, you know what I mean, had another song in Oakland or Richmond. I was the first one to make that song, that concept. So that's why I was so dear to me and so... uh so uh, uh 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 crazy because you know motherfucker come up with the idea and a nigga run run away with it and then damn near you know more successful than you was with the motherfucking idea you get kind of he get kind of jealous you know what I mean and then I just think it, it it was just us being young you know what I mean and I'm coming from you know battling and shit in Berkeley and battling at A plus house where I really chew this nigga up. Period. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah. We went there, man. We went there, man. But shout out Master P. Since then, we squashed the beef. We done met face to face. And, uh, you know, basically just squashed the shit, you know what I mean? And, and just moved on, moved, got forward, and uh, just moved forward. And, 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 and you know, shook hands like, like like real men. Like a lot of motherfuckers let you beef and talk and shit, man. Why don't you call that motherfucker, man, and get to the bottom of it? Right. Why don't y'all meet up, man? Have lunch, man, and iron that shit out, man. And get some money together. So that's what me and P did. So shout out him for being a, a, a boss, you know what I mean? And even accepting the little me with me to squash the beef, you know? Yeah, that, yeah that's what's up. That, and that's some real shit, because especially back then, like, social media wasn't around, so it was kind of hard to make. I don't know, you think it was harder to get in contact with artists back then than now? You just kind of just go off a of hearsay of what was going on? 
Um, now it was hella hard back then, you know what I mean? Um, I mean, it's easier now. It was hard back then. But you had to have somebody that really knows somebody to get in contact with an artist. You know, you had to know their management, their team, somebody in their crew. You know, right now, you could just DM a motherfucker. They just had a push of a button. So it definitely was harder. And uh, one of my homies uh, was doing business with him. A t-shirt line, man, they was doing, man, called uh, Big Baller, Ben, ba- ben Ballin'. You know, the uh, the T-shirts with the rhinestones. Anyway, him and Master P was doing that company together. Shit was going big. Floyd Mayweather was about to get a stake in it. So they had some good business going down. And this is like one of my big homies from L.A., man. So he's like, yo, man, you know, that's my little homeboy, man. Why don't y'all, you know, squash that beef? I'm going to bring him over and y'all chop it up. Yeah. So he invited me over to their uh, they warehouse, you know, Master P and his warehouse where they got the clothes and shit. And I came through, man. Everything was cool, you know? So let me ask you this. So yeah. definitely, since I know you were staple in the East Oakland and that whole now, what what in this kind of off the subject, but I just want to get what cities are actually considered the Bay out there, and what's not the Bay? Is Sac the Bay? Well, Sacramento is Northern Cali. It ain't the Bay. Okay. So the Bay Area is just the shit that's considered by the water, but mainly by that bridge. You know what I mean? The Bay Bridge, the uh, Dunbar Bridge, the San Mateo Bridge, the Vallejo Bridge. Them bridges right there is on the water, you know what I mean? So that's considered the bay. <laughs> so uh, Oakland, Richmond, Vallejo, Palo Alto, San Francisco, San Jose, Hayward, um, all in between just them little areas right there, that's the bay, period. Now, you got outskirts like Fairfield, uh, Fremont, uh, uh, Fresno, uh, Stockton, that's not the Bay. You know what I mean? That's Central California. So, um, or Central Northern. So, just everything is basically by the water. It's, it's the Bay, basically, you know? So, the reason why I asked that, so what, what was the temperature like, you know, when, when pot came out there? You know what I mean? Like, people just automatically embraced them, or, or what? how was it, you know, your experiences around that situation with pot coming out there to the Bay? Well, I was younger, you know, Pac was dealing with my cousin, the Gov, you know, free the Gov, he was dealing with the Gov and Richie Rich. But so what I got from the Gov and Richie Rich and um and AF and them is that, you know, um he was in Marin, you know, he was doing the humpy thing with them, the hip hop thing, and then once he got around them, you know, they showed them like how the bay really rocked. You know, they they damn near uh the reason why I got the ball head, you know what I mean? Because in Oakland, well, I'm going to keep it a buck. Back in the 80s, when, when motherfuckers, you know, was hustling, a lot of pimps was out there wearing finger waves and shit, jerry curls and shit. So uh, my neighborhood, the Ville, you know, we were the first ones with the ball heads and called the Louisville. You know what I mean, Seminary, which is my cousin's neighborhood, is like down the street from the Ville. So they wore ball, ball heads too. You know what I mean? So I get around them and get the ball head. You know what I mean? It's more gangster than niggas having a high top phase and niggas with the perms and, and the braids and shit like that. So he got the ball head when he started rocking with uh with real East Oakland niggas because he seen how real East Oakland street niggas was was moving. You know what I mean? He started moving like that. Um, you know, um, combined with with uh with, with his is his game that he got from his New York people too. Combined with his knowledge, you know, with, with the Black Panthers being in Oakland, I mean, it, it was just so much, so so much that he uh, that he took or, or, or soaked up, you know what I mean, literally, you know. Yeah. So he was part of the East Coast Black Panthers. You get to Oakland, this is the West Coast Black Panthers, Huey P. Newton, you know, they got the the, uh, the base East uh, in East Oakland, you know, on on, on uh, MacArthur. So you getting a full one on one. I mean, the uh, Black Panthers 101 in the flesh out here. So he learned, I think he just learned how to really uh, become gangster. I, I want to say that. You know what I mean? Just, just really thug it out. I think he really started thugging when, when he got out here. You know what I mean? Because you could tell from the movie that, you know, before that move from Baltimore, you know what I mean? He was, you know, he was pretty cool, pretty uh, uh, straight up kid. You know, he was into the, uh, into the theater, you know, theater arts, poems and all that. Once he got to Marin and, and, and people, you know, his mom started smoking crack and he started seeing people hustle. Then he got to Oakland, you know, it was a whole different lifestyle, you know what I mean? So I think that kind of made him into the thug life pop that we know 
you know, before he died, you know. So he got a lot of game, man. Oakland will turn you out. It's turning the best of people out, you know. And for Pac, it was a good thing because Pac, when he got the game, he put niggas on. He seen how niggas was unified on the, in the neighborhoods, the, the bill, like one block would be unified. You know, seminary, they all unified. They all moving in one direction. So he got his own move the uh, like outlaws and they all moving in one direction. They all get money together. So he peeped that too, how people had unity and how people was coming together in Oakland. So he peeped that too and started doing it himself. You could tell he got the thug life, you got the outlaws, you know, he went to uh death row, you know, when they really started doing so, you know, it happens, you know what I mean? But it's, it's a good thing, man. It's definitely a good thing. I think if he wouldn't have came to the bank, we wouldn't have got the Machiavelli. We wouldn't have got the uh, all eyes on me. I just don't think, you know, I don't think we really still have the pop. Um, the conscious pop, you know what I mean? That was probably on the first album, probably on uh, MC uh, New York. I think we had that yeah. instead of two pop that we known before he died. You know, he didn't go to the bank. It's my opinion. So, so what was your opinion or perspective after going to see the movie? You think they should have incorporated more the Bay in there or, or what? I think they did what they could have did. You know what I, mean? I mean, it was a two hour and 30 minute movie. You know what I mean? Like, like the outlaws told me they had to take an hour worth the scenes out. So it was, it was definitely a lot more. They just had to take it out and nail it down to the most important things that need to be, you know, in the movie. So, you know, um, I respect it. You know, I'm not a, a producer on the, on the film. I'm not a, uh, a writer, director, none of that. If, that. if that's how they got to handle it to meet their quote, then fuck it. You know what I mean? It's what it is. I have no gripes yeah. against it. I mean, I um, I just hate the motherfuckers that just hating on the shit, period, man. People talking about nigga had an iPhone and the shit, and nigga was uh, just so much hate when it comes to pop, my nigga. I just don't like that, you know? Why? Let me, so at one point in time, I seen you do an IG and I wanted, that's why, you know, that's what kind of prompted me to reach out to you because you were spitting a lot of game that I don't think a lot of people know about. You were saying that the beef between uh, Puffy and Suge was way before, you know, Pac even went to death row. Can can you explain that, what you meant by that? Well, basically, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's shit. It started between Pac and uh, Suge and uh, Puffy. And, um... Basically, uh, it was a, a situation that happened in Atlanta at a nightclub. And um, Puff has this bodyguard named Wolf. And uh, Shug had his homie or one of his best homies at the time be his bodyguard. And, uh, you know, Shug got the habit of, you know, walking around with his arm around dude's neck. You know, like, you know, that's his little thing. Even his arm going to be on your shoulder around your neck. At this time, he got his arm around Puff neck, and he's like just slanging Puff around the club, and like you know, like a rag doll. And, and Wolf is by by one having it, so Wolf draws down and tries to shoot Sugar, and Sugar homeboy jumps in the way, takes the shot, and gets killed. You know what I mean? So that was the first thing that happened. That was way before Pac even was thought of. You know, so, um, fast forward to the uh, the Source Awards. Source Awards, uh, boom, they come out on stage, you know, uh, 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 Suge is like, yeah, yeah, y'all yeah, want dances in the video? I'm there, I'm there. We got nominated that year. So I'm there. He's like, yeah, if y'all want dances in the background, we will come to death row. That shit, and we in New York, a nigga, it, it, <laughs> boo! I'm some of those niggas in Rusty Stacks. Yeah. So boom, they come out, they come out perform. Puff, you know, come out, say what he say, calms it down. Um, they come out and perform on stage. They got these motherfucking steps. You know what I mean? It's like a fucking cell block up and down steps. So as each song come on, another rapper's coming out of cell block. So boom, Corrupper come out of cell block once, stranded on death row. Ranger come out, whoa, whoa, they busting, right? Snoop come out, whoa, whoa, whoa. Or, no, they bring spot on the low rider, some wild shit. But all the, you know, other death row, RBX, all the niggas coming out of cell each time for the rap. The last cell had... Cock in the motherfucker. Cock wasn't out of jail. You know, this is the first time niggas didn't even know Pac was signing the death row. And they lit that cell up and they had a bad, uh, uh, you know, life size cat of Pac. And I think like niggas like I said, welcome Pac to death row, some shit. 
Anyway, so fast forward time. Snoop go out there to uh, do the um, New York, New York video. Boom. Biggie get on the motherfucking radio. Tell New York they saw for letting the West Coast niggas come out there and shoot the video. Motherfuckers went and shot the video up in Queens. And they, while they were shooting in Queens, they shot that bitch up. Snoop and them hop on the plane either that night or the next day. So this beef was going on before Pac even got out of jail. You know what I mean? So, and then she'll start fucking on Puffy's uh, baby mama. You know what I mean? Like, the best way to get get back at a nigga is fuck on his bitch. Right. So he start fucking on, he start fucking on Puff's baby mama, the one that got the, uh, the Justin, Justin's mom. The one that played the, uh, the, the ball and shit. His mom was getting fucked on by, uh, Shook. So that's why when Pop got out, it was easy for him to hook up with Faith because Faith and, and, uh, Justin's mom was always hanging out together. You know what I mean? And Shook is the one that introduced, you know, that lined that up. You know, cause he was already fucking on Puff's baby mom. So they was already beefing before Pop even got out. And then Pop got out and he got a problem with him. Shook got a problem. He's like, fuck it, let's ride. You know what I mean? But it, it was mainly, you know, because of some shit that Puff did. His, his bodyguard, Wolf, that's where, where the beef really really started. The bodyguard killed when the shit niggas, and it's been on ever since then, you know? So so when that old, whole East Coast, West Coast beef was going on, was there any artists that you wanted to work with out there that, you know, it never happened? Or did you get affected by that beef in any type of way as far as the group or the progression of putting out songs or anything like collaborating with anybody? Nah, hell no, nah, man. As a matter of fact, we supposed to get Biggie on fucking uh Lunatic Music. You know, I was, you know, when we went on tour with them in 95 on the Bad Boy Jodeci tour, when we was on tour with them, we I built a great rapport with Biggie, Julia, Mafia, all them niggas love me. I was selling weed on tour. You know, we got fresh off the block. You know, they do a motherfucking three-month tour with Biggie and them. This is five on it just dropped less than a month ago. Right. You know, we still in the streets. We ain't got no money like that. So I got on tour. I was selling them niggas weed. Him, Faith, everybody. I was a weed man. So fast forward time, he come to L.A. And uh, he's working. He's doing this promo tour for, you know, the new album, Life After Death. And um, he told me to come to his room, bring some trees. Uh, basically, uh, I was with Biggie three days before he got killed. You know what I mean? He was at the Four Seasons. And I'm talking to him about getting on the uh, Looney's album. You know, also bought him some weed, some pills and shit. They uh they uh uh premiered the Crush on You video with Lil C's and, and Little Kim. This is their first video as Junior Mafia, so C's hell excited. Like, yup, nigga, watch this. It's gonna be on BT nigga on Monday. Nigga, watch nigga me and woo woo. So they show me the video and shit. And at the same time, they go see after they show me the video. I'm like, oh nigga, I'm about to kill it. Go back in big room and big is like, nigga, I love Pac, man. I don't know what the fuck is going on, man. Woo 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 woo. I just wish he was alive so I could have squashed that shit, just let him know. Yo, he was hanging with some foul dudes, yo, and I kept telling him, yo, but he know I had nothing to do with that, man. You know, we love him. We looked up to him, this, that, and the third. Yo, Pac gave me my first show, yo. He started breaking down shit that Pac did for, you know, him, Puff, and Junior Mafia. He's like, yo, that was my brother, man. I never, you know, do nothing to him or set him up. He said, that was his mans. He was hanging with his mans. His mans was some bullshit, you know? So it didn't it didn't tarnish none of my relationships with the, with, with East Coast people because I still was with Biggie after Pac died. I still was able to link up, come to his hotel room exactly when he was at. Now if I was on some sucker shit, I could have set him up, but he knew that I was cool. You know what I mean? He knew that I was cool. The whole tour, I've been touring with them niggas for three months straight, so they knew I was cool as a fucking fan. But uh. Nah, it didn't, it didn't tarnish none of my relationships. We was going to get Biggie on the, on the fucking uh, album, but he died three days later. He was supposed to come to the fucking studio, actually, a day or two after the uh, the Vibe Awards, man. So that kind of fucked everything up, man. So rest in peace to Biggie, but he is connected. And then uh, New Tribe, the record label, had a lot of East Coast artists on it. You know, Doo-Wop and the Bounce Squad, Snagger Puss and them, uh, fucking um, Diesel Don and Govmatic, you know, down with uh, Brick City, uh, the Brick City crew, I mean, what they, what they was called, man. That stand with Red Man. I don't know what the phone, I don't know what they was called, but anyway, they was part of Red Man crew. Yeah. So, um, we just linked with New York niggas all day, period. It, it didn't tarnish nothing. Everybody out here really took that like it was a Pac and Biggie situation on Bad Boy and Death Row. No other artists on a, a it was never like that. Everybody, 
far as, you know, over here. I don't know how they looked on the East Coast, but far as on the West Coast, niggas always looked at that's bad boy and, uh, and, uh, Death Row beef. And nobody was like, oh, fuck Biggie and fuck Puffy. Nah. Right, right. Now, seeing from the outside looking in, or listening to your albums, even all the solos and stuff, even up to date, I see you always take lyricism, like you really into lyricism and stuff. Like, do you judge rappers nowadays since the the ghost writing shit is like more prevalent in the rap game now, where people making it where it's okay? Do you think people still can be in the top five if they have ghost writers, or you really take the pen serious? You can't be in the top five having a ghost writer. Now, have, have people been very successful from having ghost riders even back in the day. Yeah, shout out Puff, shout out Dr. Dre, shout out Easy E. You know, they all had great writers, you know what I mean? But what I put Dr. Dre as a top lyricist in any category, fuck no. What I put Easy E as a top lyricist in any category, fuck no. What I put Puff Daddy as a top lyricist in any fucking category, fuck no. Not at all. You know what I mean? Period. Drake, you get your niggas right for you. You know, I consider Drake as the most complete artist, the most rounded artist that, that has ever came in rap, period. Like, he, when they say the triple threat, mm-hmm. that's him. Besides, Pac ain't been a, a more complex artist since Pac. You know what I mean? Period. Now, Pac can have the different styles, but Pac had different ways, ways. You know what I mean? As far as his persona, as far as it, who he was, being an actor, being a Versace model. He had different lanes that artists wasn't doing that much, barely at that time. Same with Drake, him being an ex, you know, a uh, 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 actor, knowing how to sing, knowing how to rap. You know what I mean? You know, this just the whole shit. You know what I mean? Period. So he personifies what's considered cool, you know, or considered the cool kid or cool uh, or, or the top shit in hip hop today. But when I do my top ten lyricists, will he be in that motherfucker? Fuck no. Hell no. Nah, nah, nah. nah. Mm-hmm. Not with niggas writing, writing your raps that helping you write. None of that shit. Nobody helped me do shit. Period. The, the singer could come and sing the hook, and nine times out of ten, I wrote the hook too. So, mm-hmm. my brothers can't help me do nothing. Mm-hmm. Period. Mm-hmm. If a motherfucker helping you, you, you cheat. You shouldn't be, be in the top ten or the top five. You're, you're an entertainer. It's just entertainment. But when you are in seat, you know what I mean? When you are in, not a rapper. Rappers get shit written for them. But when you are MC, a master of ceremony, no, you can't have no assistance, period. It's like being a master barber, master chef. No, you, you can't have no assistance, man, period. You got to be a master of ceremony or you're just a rapper. So I'm a master of ceremony and I, and I, and I really take this shit serious, you know? So overall, how, how you look at the West Coast hip hop scene right now? You, you, you liking where it's at? I love it. I love it. I mean, at the end of the day, man, um, it's looking ugly for everybody. You know, Atlanta has just been, been on for the last, let's see, since Jeezy came. <laughs> since Jeezy and BMF, that was 2005, <laughs> yeah. 2004, 2003. Since them niggas came to Atlanta, Atlanta has been on every fucking since, man. So it's like everybody is taking a back seat, you know, to Atlanta. You know, basically, you know, if you want to keep it a buck. But um, the Bay Area is the, is the next way that everybody's doing. They're either doing the trap shit like Atlanta and singing or they're doing the Bay Area sound and beats. You know what I mean? Shout out DJ Mustard and all the L.A. dudes, you know, who doing the same type of Bay Area shit. It's all West Coast, though. You know what I mean? Like like you said, it ain't like a nigga doing, you know, Bay Area beats from, you know what I mean, San Antonio. This is all on the same coast. So Mustard, all the people doing the same type of Bay Area beats is still us. You know what I mean? Still West Coast. So. It's accepted. But um, I think that, that wave of music is starting to rise. You know, it's a lot of down south dudes that's doing a lot of Bay Area shit, too. So I think between them two lanes, we good. You know what I mean? Period. Straight up. Atlanta got the trap lane, and uh, we got the ratchet. You know what I mean? Um, hyphy, get stupid lane. And that's just still running to this day. Rest in peace, Max Right. You know? Well, what do you think as far as now from a business perspective? Because I want to get... Some a lot of people look at down south, regardless if they like it, they like mumble rap, or however they look at it. But from a business perspective, what do you think the dudes down there are doing to keep it the ball in their court that long that other coasts maybe should take heave to? Or you think? Uh, I'm gonna tell you, not to cut you off, man, but I already know exactly what 
And I tell niggas this all the time, man. It's the unity that they got, my G. It's the unity, man. I could tell you right this. I could go down to Atlanta for like a week, and I could get a song with Lil Wayne, Gucci Mane, Jeezy, all the top dudes out there, probably Bobby Smurda, no problem. I mean, uh, uh, uh what the shit called? Ray Schremer, no problem. They just going to record, and if the song blow up, then let's come back to the drawing board, do the splits, do this, that, and the third, get some money out there. So people just record and record and record all day. They don't give a fuck who you are. Let's go, let's go, let's go. And they getting the music in. You know what I mean? Out here, everybody, I can't do no song with Dr. Dre if I wanted to. I can't get Snoop on the song if I wanted. I couldn't get, you know what I mean? The top niggas is out here, you know, but out there you could get them. I, like, they fucking with it, man. So the fact that they unified and they willing to do music with everybody, that's why they pop it. You know, out here, it's a certain, you got to be an A-list and, and even, you know what I mean, or a B-list or independent or major. It's on them levels out here. They unified like that, man. Niggas ain't doing music together. It's like section out. L.A. niggas doing L.A. music and Bay niggas doing Bay music to where Atlanta, you know what I mean, including Florida, including uh, Louisiana, you know, uh, Nashville, all that shit, all the down in Houston, all them niggas came together, you know what I mean, and rocking together and keeping that shit lit, man. And it's just, the, you know, the West Coast, we ain't doing that, period. That's why we losing. The East Coast ain't doing that. That's why they losing. Yeah. Once niggas bring that unity and everybody start rocking with each other to where the big boys are, are you know, are able to, you know what I mean, or... I mean, I'm just saying, man, it's, it's just totally fucking different, man. It's just a lot of love out there down south, man. They fuck with motherfuckers heavy. They got that southern love, man. Out here, it's just too much hate. Niggas is competing with each other instead of eating with each other, you know? Yeah. That's the difference between the south and everybody else. The niggas got love for, for east coast niggas, west coast niggas. You know, everybody to move to Atlanta. That's like, that's the hub. Yeah. Period. Yeah. So they got love for everybody. They fuck with people, you know what I mean? And it's the... The other people who ain't fucking with with each other, you know what I mean. So once we start fucking with each other, man, we'll be on just like that, period. And that's across the board. I mean, just the West Coast, that East yeah. Coast, Midwest, everybody. Once y'all start fucking with y'all area, you know what I mean, y'all coast or whatever y'all got going, and start really unifying and doing good music together, dope sell itself, man. No matter who's the top dude or who's the lowest dude, man, just do the work. I make a dope ass song, a hit, a hit gonna sell regardless who on the motherfucker. Period, but you got to do the work first. Right. Niggas ain't doing the work out here. Everybody's stuck on their own shit, so that's why they went. I done seen this shit firsthand. I went out there, niggas like, yeah, I'm trying to get a studio. Yeah, I know you out here. These, these are the big boys asking me. I'm not asking them. Right. These yeah. niggas asking me. Yup, man, you going to come up here? You going to be a password? We up here. Jazzy Faye. Yeah. Hey, what is Jazzy? You know I got this shit for you. I'm never for sure. Ooh, all right, Jazzy Faye hit me on my mind. Come on, man. You know I got woo woo woo. Uh, uh, what's the other nigga name that was doing all the beats for uh for not Sierra? Yeah, I think it's Sierra and the other chick. Whatever. Fold. What the niggas called the nigga with the braids. Anyway, man. Uh, I think, uh, I think it's so many damn producers down there, man. I can't yeah, even. But he was one of them niggas though. He one of them boys, man. I think it's some anyway. All these niggas hit. Yeah, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Nigga, everybody hit me out here. It's like, man, I got it. You know, of course you got relationships with people, but the people who you don't got, I ain't got relationships with them people out there in Atlanta. Yeah. But they know, they respect my legacy from what I did. I rap a lot. You know what I mean? Oh shit, nigga, we love rap a lot. Nigga, come on, let's go. Out here, it ain't that type of game. You know what I mean? Period. I'm just going to keep it a buck straight up. And not just with me. I'm talking about everybody. I, I'm, I'm not even on no shit like that. You know what I mean? Period. I'm unified with niggas who I rock with. But I'm talking about the big dogs. They need to start just being more uh more available. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just just be more available. You know what I mean? Just like I'm still waiting. Yeah. Like it, it took a long time to get a Snoop Dogg and Forty song. That shit took a long time. You think it was You know what I mean? Like, you you it's think it's a long time. Do you think it's because like <clears throat> let me see how this word is like the mentality, I ain't gonna say just the streets because everybody ain't from the streets, but say friends, you think it's more of, People not crossing over to the corporate way of thinking when handling business, everything is still kind of segregated. Like, I'm only going to fuck with my niggas, and that's it. You cut more of the street mentality and not the music business mentality. Because one thing I always wanted to ask a person like yourself, like I say, keeping up with your, 
lineage and being a fan of yours is what was the hardest transition for someone like yourself to say, fuck it, I'm done with the streets. I'm going to go full fledged with this music shit. And what advice would you give to someone that come from a similar background like that to be like, Hey, I got more to lose. Let me go ahead and take this serious and leave that alone. Um, shit, just, just, just me being in and out of fucking jail so much, bro. That killed me, my G. Once I was going to camp and once I did that year, I'm like, oh yeah, this shit's serious because as a juvenile, you know, niggas only doing like three days or a week. If it's that, you know what I mean? People like you in and out. Like that's why niggas was having a little youngster sell the dope because they didn't get no time. Right. So nigga be used to getting out in three days, nigga end up having to do a year. <laughs> yeah. I woke that nigga up like, oh man, this shit's bullshit. I ain't doing that no more. <laughs> you know what I mean? So uh, it just made me. Uh, that's why I started doing the rap shit. Like you see, I went to jail and got focused. Like I got to come out with a plan. I can't keep going back and forth to jail. You know, hopping these fences, running from police, running from these gunshots. You know, riding in the back seat, shooting at niggas. That's fucking with the neighborhood where I sell dope at. I mean, getting shot, you know what I mean? All that shit, like, I mean, too much. Beating up dope fiends, I mean, it, it's just too much, man. I'm like, yo, it got to be a better way. So uh, once I got the opportunity to, to, to go to that studio and rap against rap around and see that shit was real, I'm like, yo, this is me. I'm doing this, man. Fuck that street shit. And I'm going to apply the same hustle that I had on the streets to this rap shit, you know what I mean? And that's how I've been doing it ever since, you know? So to, to wrap it up back onto your your album that you got coming out, as of recent what like what inspired this one that's coming out now like is it conceptual the music that you putting together is it like you know you got a full like a, a vision for each song is gonna play all together or like what's the inspiration behind this album uh you talking about the whole jj project or just the deluxe that's coming out either or either or i mean basically the jj project is the prequel to thugged out the abolition mm -hmm. you know what i mean and um Basically, uh, there was a lot of shit that I've been touched on, you know what I mean? And um, I just wanted to go deeper into depth, you know, about my neighborhood, you know, about where I was raised, about Oakland, the Black Panthers, you know, my OGs, Lil D, Felix Mitchell, you know, just the, the legendary shit that, 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 I, that I come from, you know what I mean? Because I really didn't get to touch on it, you know, other albums, you know? So, um, and then fans were getting tired of me talking about, you know, the ball of shit and trying to do music that other people do instead of doing my own music. So I just had to take it back to doing me. You know what I mean? And um just give people another history lesson. You know, you got the millennials, you know, that done grew up, people were like fucking just born in ninety five, you know, and, and probably five years old or six years old when Thug Out came out. So a lot of millennials probably don't even understand. So I just wanted to get them a history lesson too. You know what I mean? So get them a history lesson and also touch on, you know, back on that shit that the fans love me for. You know what I mean? So, boom, gave him that JJ based on the Bill story, part one and part two, and a part three on the way, man, which is deluxe. And I want it. And I just gave him three albums. You know what I mean? I'm giving niggas three albums because I took a long time off. Like five years off, literally, as far as, as far as my solo shit. I took five years off. I've been doing little mixtapes and shit, whatever, but it ain't like how I would do my solo shit, like a yuck out. Right. You know what I mean? So, I've been doing the podcast shit at Smoke Lot Radio, all types of other ventures going on. So I wasn't even tripping off the rap shit, you know. Nothing just got out of jail. We got the room shit popping. We've been doing hella tours, big arenas and shit. So I really wasn't tripping. And then um, fans, like one nigga was like, it wasn't even the fans. It was one of the homeboys like, yeah, man, you know, man, the game is missing you right now, man. And don't never forget, man, you one of the dopest niggas to ever do this shit now. I'm a humble dude. I'm a humble dude, you know what I mean? So I don't be too my own horn and shit. I don't be running around like, oh, nigga, I'm dope. I kill niggas. I just, you know, I'm a chill dude. So um, once he told me that, it just put the flame in me. Like, you know, I am dope, my nigga. Yeah. You know what I mean? Don't never let nobody diss you. Don't never let nobody tell you you ain't that nigga, blood. Because a lot of shit wouldn't even be popping if it weren't for you, nigga. You was the first with the DVD hustle. You was the first with this, that, and the third. Start breaking down all the shit I bought to the game. I'm like, damn, you right. He like, look at whoop, whoop, whoop. Like, he just started breaking this shit down. He like, I remember when niggas was whoop, whoop, whoop. And then you came around, all of a sudden, niggas started rocking the custom Gucci, your Nikes, the, the Burberries, the, all this shit, man. But you was the first. Whoop, whoop. I said, you're absolutely right. So he just got me back on my shit, man, period. So 
shout out to homie uh, Monster Ganja, you know what I mean, for, for really having that talk with me, because I was damn near about to just hang it up. Like, I just do this loony shit. I ain't even tripping on this rap shit no more. Because it ain't no money in it. I mean, it ain't no, I mean, it's money in it, but albums ain't selling how I used to. Right. You know, you can milk show money, you can milk the merch money, the uh, sponsorships and whatever may go down, but far as album selling, you know what I mean? That shit is out the window. Okay. Cars don't even come with a CD player no more. Right. It's all motherfucking Bluetooth. It's so it's like, why press up some CDs if the car can't even play it? So it's, it's to that point to where, you know what I mean? Like, whoa. You know, so. That's, that's, that's shit crazy. Shit I, yeah, I do this shit because I love the music. You got to love it. You got to have a passion for this shit because if you don't, you'll get lost in the sauce, my nigga, fear it. Because if you're just trying to think that you're going to live off this shit, like be a multi-billionaire off this shit, Think again, my nigga. Think again, especially being brand new. Now, you got to have a have been in the game. You got to have your fan base already established, you know, because the brand new dudes, they have a high hit. This shit will be popping for a month, and then you don't hear from the niggas no more. It's a new nigga that took his spot. So, you know, I'm thankful for, for, for coming in the 90s where my fans and, and we have a fucking uh, cult, you know what I mean, uh, or a real fan base that still support us to this day. You know what I mean? If I'd have had that, I wouldn't even be doing this shit. I do it for the fans right now, period. Right. You know? Definitely. Straight up. How, how can everybody reach you, you know, on your Instagram, social medias and all that? Anything, you know, besides the album you want them to look out for? How you, how can they get in contact with you? Well, um, contact IG is a regime general. Uh, Twitter, at the real yuck mouth, T-H-A, real yuck mouth. Um, uh, Facebook, yuck mouth. Um, website smokealotrecords.com uh, be ready be on the lookout for this JJ based on the Bill Story Deluxe album dropping next month after that me and Numb got an EP we dropping probably by Christmas or the beginning of the year after that Operation Stack Ola 2 look out for the next Thug Lords me and Sebo about to get in the studio with that me and Jay Hood got a group of album together called the Savages I'm about to come back with Smoke A Lot Radio. We're going to be on Dash Radio uh, in September, October. Um, I got uh, United Ghettos of America, uh, Volume 3 coming out. All Max Dre footage, all Jacka footage. Uh, with an album to go with that, the soundtrack. Um, still got the vape pans going, the dime vape going. Still got the motherfucking glass company, Smoke A Lot Glass going. Um, just, just a lot of ventures, man. A lot of ventures, man. So just hit, hit my website, man, just to stay tapped in with everything I got going with smokealiverecords.com, man. And I appreciate you for the interview, my G. Oh, for sure, man. I definitely appreciate it, man. You, you a legend in my eyes, man. I be feeling like you underrated. And it'd be wrong for me not to ask this. For anybody that's going to come out to Cali and touch down, what strain that you say niggas need to pick up? Man, you know, I got two bone horn on this one, man. That's super dank OG. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's, that's, that's my own strain, man. I got to blow that up, man. But uh, uh, other than that, man, um, you got to come out here and touch on some of them blue blue chip cookies. Blue chip. You got to come out here and touch on some of that goddamn uh, tangy and some of that goddamn lemon tree. Some of that goddamn, um, they got some shit that, Orange, what is it? Orange something? Uh, man, it's some shit, man. It's a lot of food, exotic flavors out here, man. The boy, what the boy called the Jungle Boys? They got some wild shit, man. There's some niggas with some shit, man. I fuck with the Russian assassins, man. So they they keep it loud, man. They got all the Paris OGs, and all the uh, what's called the West Coast. So I mean, uh, what's this shit called, man? Um, Paris OG. What this shit called, man? Ah, uh, shit, man. There's so much shit, man. But they got all the shit, man. Period. Definitely. And they the ones who made my strand, man. Uh, super dank OG, man. So, tap in. You come to Cali, man. You and, um, you and the Bay, man, hit up, uh, hit up the green door. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Now, definitely hit up the green door. They got all the good shit. If you in LA, hit up, um, mm, you gotta hit up, uh, Los Angeles Kush, man. Them Japanese boys got it all, man. Mm.